my personal experience with the crystal skulls and the 13 gates. A couple of years ago I just felt the need to start looking for crystal skulls, I have no idea what brought it up, I just had to find something. At that moment I couldn't find anything about them that really spoke to me so I decided to let it go. I did get an email from someone after that asking me what I knew about the crystal skulls and he sent me a picture of one of the crystal skulls. I remember getting some information and feeling a connection but it just didn't stay in my mind and I forgot all about the crystal skulls. Several months later a friend told me about a workshop she was going to, called the opening of the gates. I was interested but not enough to say I wanted to go as well. It was quite expensive I thought and since my guidance was not saying anything I knew it was not for me. But I did want to know all about what was happening there. So when she called me to tell me about her experiences I was all ears, she had an amazing experience herself but did not know much about what the gates actually were. She did tell me that the teacher told them that he got the information from one of the crystal skulls and that there were 12 gates. When I went to bed that evening, just before I fell asleep, I found myself standing in front of a gate and when I went through it another one showed up, they all had a crystal skull with them. So I went through the next gate and every time a new gate would be there accompanied by a crystal skull. After going through 12 gates and seeing them all open, I started walking up and back through all of them. Then at one point after walking up and back several times I went through the twelfth gate again and they all collapsed behind me and I saw another gate appear, I knew this was the thirteenth gate and it was beautiful. There was another crystal skull there and even though it looked solid, when I got closer it seemed more liquid, getting even closer I realized it was just pure energy and even though it seemed clear there were all these particles of light in there with colors that I am just not able to describe in the physical. I can see it in my mind but I have never been able to find an example in the physical world. That was it, I told my husband and friend but nothing else happened so I completely forgot about the skulls again. This year I was told by Kathumi to go on a trip with a group to Egypt, Israel, and Jordan. And then my friend told me there was going to be another opening of the gates workshop and I was told that I needed to be there. So I signed up and went. What the teacher did was open a seal in the forehead and then take me through a gate. He would do two gates during each workshop. While he did this I started to see a mountain and there was a huge group of people, they looked a bit like monks, walking on a path toward the mountain. The moment the group reached the first mountain, I saw all these mountains pop up out of the earth, and every time the group passed a mountain there was this light shooting up out of the mountain. This went on until the group reached the twelfth mountain and all the mountains were lit. When it was time for the second gate opening I was seeing the planet Earth from above. I was in a universe with many planets and I saw all 12 mountains lit up on planet Earth. Then I heard everyone cheering on all the other planets and what I heard them say was, they made it and everyone on the planets started applauding and cheering. It was a great experience and I knew it had to do something with the trip I was going to take to Egypt, Israel, and Jordan. The trip was amazing, I took a little bit of a detour and spent one day in Johannesburg, South Africa with a guide who took me to all the special places there. It would have been easier to just go from the United States to Egypt but there was this need for me to visit this country first. It was like visiting a place that I had left some of my energy and I needed to retrieve the energy. I was never afraid even though I had heard the stories and I spent some time in one of the poorest neighborhoods there. I was amazed at how people are able to live there, but all they were focused on was to make a better life for themselves and they were doing it. So after South Africa it was on to Egypt to meet the rest of the group. Just before I left I had met someone over the phone through a mutual friend and she was supposed to meet me in the Netherlands. She had missed her flight and I was going to meet her there as well. It was a big group of 30 people and after eating something we left for our first hotel. I couldn't wait to go see the pyramids of Giza, and we went there on 999. We were told we had to get up early and be there before 8am so we could buy the tickets.
We got there early and we were all running toward the ticket stand while I was seeing people already standing in line to enter the Pyramid of Tufa, the oldest and largest of the three pyramids on the plateau with the king's and queen's chambers. I was surprised to see that since we were told they didn't open until late but soon found out the reason. The tickets were sold out. Our guide was very upset to say the least and actually ended up involving the police and some other people responsible. We were told to wait and we all knew that this was the way it needed to be. After waiting for about half an hour we heard that we got our tickets and we could go in as a group at 9.30. So we went to see the solar boat first, this was believed to be the funerary bark that carried the body of Chufa from Memphis to his tomb at Giza. It was a strange experience seeing that boat and a lot of sad feelings came to me and I was thinking I have been on boats like that many times. Finally, it was time to enter the Great Pyramid and we had to climb a long way up to the King's Chamber, the Queen's Chamber was closed. We got inside and everyone settled down for the things that were about to happen. The lady leading the group was going to do a trance channeling and she was channeling Mary Magdalene. I was not really hearing what she was saying, I was in the energy, but suddenly two of the guards came in and they started telling us to stop and leave. Mary Magdalene raised her voice and said that she was not going to be stopped and she would proceed with what she was doing. The guards tried several more times to stop her but left after they couldn't do anything. After this we finished and I was told by Kuthumi to be the last person to leave the king's chamber. So I waited for everyone to leave and stayed for about one minute outside the king's chamber. This is where Kuthumi told me to seal off the entrance so no one would be able to touch or remove the energy that was placed there. When I went down halfway, the two guards were waiting for me and one of them gave me his hand and all he said was thank you mother. So it had brought out something in them that remembered these things. The guards of the pyramids are chosen from a special lineage of people that have been guards throughout time. After this it was on to see the other pyramids and then the Sphinx. This was going to be special and my friend and I had set our mind to enter the Sphinx. We soon found out it was not even possible to get close so we settled at a quiet spot and started meditating. Two days before that I had a dream with someone giving me three flames and they were placed in my heart center. While sitting there meditating, I entered the Sphinx and I found myself calling down this huge crystal, it was way bigger than I am but I was holding it up in the air and more people were arriving. Then I took the flames from my heart and sent them into the crystal that started glowing at first and then came up to full speed with this beautiful violet colored light streaming out of it. I placed the crystal in the middle of the room and all we could do was just look at it. Then I disconnected and was back into the real world looking at the Sphinx. My friend, who had arrived in Egypt a day before me, had told me about this amazing shop she had found that had essential oil blends. The owner was an Egyptian healer and one of his stores was across from the pyramids. We decided to take a little trip of our own, even though we were warned that it could be somewhat dangerous. She had his phone number and we called him that evening. He told us to meet him at a hotel that he was at and he would take us from there to his store. So we went at 9.30 in the evening and got someone outside the hotel to get us a cab. When we arrived at the hotel and looked around I saw this man standing there and just knew that it was him. He was looking around and came straight over to us. We hugged and introduced ourselves. He had arranged another cab and off we went to his store. When we arrived. He had us sit down and had someone bring us some tea. It was an amazing energy and he told me to just walk around and have a look. All I did at first was stand in the middle of the room and soak up the energies coming from the oils. I was actually sending some of it to my own oils in my little office at home. After looking around we sat down and talked. He had someone get us some food and then my husband called me from home and told me that he was sitting in the living room and suddenly heard a big bang. He went into my office and found all my oils on the floor. They were in a little cabinet on the wall and the whole cabinet had fallen on the floor. And the children and the cats were with him so he knew they were not involved in this. 
I told him what I was doing during that time, sending some of the energy from those oils to my own oils. And we both were amazed by the effect. So I just couldn't resist buying some oils and bringing them back with me. I think we finally got back at the hotel at 4 a.m., and we got some sleep and up again at 8. The next couple of days we spent at some other place including Mount Sinai. Then it was on to Israel. At one point we were about to enter some building, I don't even remember what it was, all I know is that I didn't feel like going in. My friend had the same feeling so we decided to go have a look at the little shops around the corner. At one of the first shops my friend found an earring, with a silver rectangle and twelve little stones in it. And she wanted to have it but there was only one earring. So we looked for the owner of this jewelry and it didn't take long before he showed up. He took us into his store and there we found more of the same type. We were told that the priests were wearing this symbol and it was called the Twelve Tribes of Israel. We both just knew we had to have it. They had a ring, earring and a necklace, just not two of each. The owner was very helpful and told us that his father had more at home and if we gave him our hotel he would come by that evening and bring it to us. And yes that evening they came and brought all of them, including some other necklaces. One of them with a Star of David, which I just felt very attracted to. I am not Jewish, my husband is although not practicing, I just had that feeling that you can have with certain things. So I ended up buying that necklace as well. And yes the next day my husband calls me and asked me what I was doing the day before because he was seeing this huge star of David above me. I do have to tell you one other thing which was mostly funny, we had a group picture made by someone outside on the places we were visiting and the photographer asked how many people wanted the picture. When we got out he was standing there and I got in line to buy two of them. One for me and one for my friend. When it was my turn, I asked how much they were and started counting my money. Someone went before me and bought a picture and when I was ready with my money in my hands he told me he didn't have any more. I was very disappointed and started walking back toward my friend telling her that he didn't have any more pictures. She looks at me and says what is that under your arm? I look and see two pictures. All we could do was a laugh and say thank you Kuthumi. We told some of the other people and one of them said, yes, and I saw you walking back without pictures. One of Kuthumi's surprises for us. We did several other things in Israel but I don't remember much of it. And then it was time to leave for Jordan, I knew this was especially for me, my parents must have had a reason for naming me Petra. So finally the day arrived and we got to see the city of Petra. It was a long walk through stone walls and I just remembered how beautiful it once was. There used to be flowers and trees growing there and now it was just being used by people who didn't really want anything else than make money of it. It was used as public bathroom and the caves smelled like that. I felt a lot of anger and was thinking how could they have done this to my city, I would rather have it destroyed than being used like this. We walked on and entered one of the open spots with the library, a magnificent building, but the only thing we were able to see was the outside, we were not allowed to enter in any of it. It was a great experience though and I felt I had done everything that needed to be done on my trip. Integrating all the energies from all these places and becoming more whole. Back in the United States I was told that there was going to be another workshop of the gates one week after I got back. I really didn't feel like going, especially since it was 125.00 and I just didn't have that money. But Kuthumi was very much telling me I need to go. My friend told me she would pay for me so I went. A couple of days before the workshop, just before falling asleep I found myself in front of the 13th gate again. I recognized the seal on it and opened the gate. Isis and Tote were by my side and I entered the gate. After spending some time there I went out and closed the gate again with the seal that I knew as my own. The next day Sananda told me he had a message and he gave me the message about the 13th gate. He told me to give the message to the teacher of the workshop and tell him that I would take him into the 13th gate if he wanted. 
so at the workshop when it was time for the gate opening I waited until everyone else had their turn and went in. I gave him the message and he read it, looked at me and told me he knew about this gate. So I said to him I would take him there if he wanted. He said yes and we started going up. I had a very hard time getting the energy high enough to actually open the gate with him next to me. But we entered, stayed for a little bit at the entrance and went back. He told me we would talk about it later and I said yes we will. I didn't close the gate because Sananda had told me I needed to make a connection for the other people there to this gate. So when it was time for the second opening of the gates I went outside and started working. My friend came outside while I was sitting there and asked me what I was doing during the opening. She had an amazing experience of standing in the doorway of the gate and seeing how the universe was created. When I went back inside, I was told that everyone had a completely different experience than with any of the other gates they had been through. I closed up the gate and the teacher started telling us about the 13th gate. All he told the group was that he knew about the 13th gate and that I had come today telling him I knew about it. Someone asked him if he knew how many gates they still had to go through, and he told them he didn't know, he knew I still had to go through one gate. This I knew was not true but I didn't say anything about it. I also knew that most people there were at the 12th gate, but I knew not to say anything about that either. The teacher and I never talked about our experience during the first gate, he did ask me to keep him up to date about information I would get about this 13th gate and I did. I sent him an email later to ask him about his experience but never got an email back. Then last week after being busy writing a book about ascension, bringing out more messages. Then one day my husband came into my office while I was checking my email and he told me he got a message from the Crystal Skulls. This was the message. The Crystal Skulls belong to everyone. Thank you, of course to the appointed guardians through time who have served as changers of consciousness and protectors of the Crystal Skulls. There are many secrets encoded in the crystal skulls that relate to the inputting of access to higher consciousness during this time and moving forward. Encoded only means not experienced with conscious oneness. Yet. Access these lights. Access these lights. Let them inform your consciousness. Maybe only one line of energy of thousands will come to you. But believe me this one line of energy from a crystal skull can be of such magnitude that it can really bless, help and support in holding higher consciousness. They are of very high frequencies. Honor the spirit in the crystal skulls. They are here to assist us into our transition into the fifth dimension and will actually work with us in our future through into the tenth dimension. So, ascension and forward. After typing this my husband said that they told him I would finish the message. So I saved the file and went on with checking my email. The first one I opened was from someone who told me she had been given a message during meditation about 12 initiations and Tote and Isis were part of this. She couldn't find anything about it on the internet and someone had told her to ask me. My husband was still there and I told him that this was about the 12 gates. I felt I need some time so decided to make some lunch and while eating all the information started coming in. I started writing down the message from the skulls and made another page on my website and sent out the message. My husband had told me a couple of days before that, that he felt I was going to make special energy pictures for people and I knew this was connected to these initiations of the 12 gates. I know that we all are going through these gates and it is part of our ascension process. I was wondering why everyone has to go through all 12, but they explained to me that because all the previous gates were closed everyone had to enter them again to integrate the teachings of that specific gate and the gate would stay open after that. This is because in previous times, every time we would enter a new gate the old one would be closed and we weren't really able to go back because every time we entered another life we had lost the remembrance of these gates consciously. The one other thing I know is that once you enter the 13th gate you will be taught how to build your golden Merkaba which you will use during your ascension into the 5th dimension. 
You will also use this golden Merkaba for traveling up and back from the fifth dimension to the third dimension if you choose to go back to be one of the people assisting and teaching the ones that are still in the third dimension. These teachings are very old, which doesn't mean that if you feel you have never gone through a gate you cannot start this now. Everyone can do this no matter where they are in their process. This story turned out a bit longer than I thought, but just wanted to share my experiences and what I know so far about the skulls and the gates. I know there will be more information coming from the skulls but for now this is it. Hope you enjoyed reading it. Love and Light Petra. Petra